Everything is fantastic. All right, I guess we'll just fucking do it. It's gonna get hot. These lights, I sweat every fucking day. <laughs> Look, I'm already getting it. <laughs> already getting that under. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Let's do it. Welcome to Titan Uncensored, and this time we are cleaning up the Titanverse itself with one of my favorite human beings and probably yours, the cleanest, the greenest, Clean Mike Green himself. What is going on, my brother? Pleasure to be here. Um, I don't really get to do a lot of things like this, yeah. so um, I'm usually I'm usually in the background. Um, I'm behind the green screen, not in front of it. So You are so, the green screen today, my friend. I see that. So what's going on? What's going on in your fucking world? Um, trying to wrap my head around 2021 like everybody else is. Um, I mean, 2020 just kind of kept swinging on the way out. 2021 was like, hold my beer. I said, shit, I'm going to drink it. Oh, yeah, honey. That's, that's what I always fucking do. <laughs> Before we get started, you guys know what to do. Make sure you go ahead and follow all the social media gimmicks and uh, like and share and send them to your sister, all that fun stuff. Where do we find you on social media if you want people to find you on social media? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. I'm not a very uh, private person when it comes to most things. Um, Twitter. Clean my green TikTok. Clean my green. Uh, not a lot of stuff there. Not very funny. Um, Instagram. Clean my green. Um, <laughs> Facebook. Mike Green. But I mean, sometimes it's weird. People add you. Oh yeah, for sure. So, so how did the uh, Clean my green thing uh, get started? Like I know a lot of people. You know, they know you as the fucking handiest guy on the fucking planet. You're MacGyver. <laughs> but how is it Clean my green? Um, well, see, Clean my green actually started. With the uh, the Road Home from Wrestling podcast, um, when uh, at Drusen for tweets uh, is actually the the guy who gets the credit for for the name Clean Mike Green. There was a uh, I don't know if you remember the Who's House match between Angel and Nasty Russ. Yeah. So when the ring was kind of um, spread open with you know, the uh, the light bulbs and tacks and everything that was in there, we don't have a lot of time being on the sidelines to get in there and kind of clean things up. So we had to figure it out pretty quick. Um, this is not a knock at the guys who are out there on the sidelines. Um, they just kind of, they're, they're given an instruction and they go and do it. So ingenuity wasn't really um, a hot point. But uh, we're trying to clean things up. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the other wrestlers jumped into the ring and we're cleaning things up. I just yelled out, go get me, go get me some cardboard. Give me a pizza box. Go to, go to concessions. Give me a pizza box. And they came back out. We turned the pizza box into two dust pans. We got the ring cleaned up. Scooted everybody the fuck out of there, and we're out of there in no time. Hell yeah. And um, from that instance alone, um, Drew's for Tweets was called the sensei of cleaning. And it's talking about uh, young boy camp, teaching these young boys how to do it. <laughs> it, was, it was a whole big thing. And um, when when the next show popped up, it was... <laughs> there it is. Pardon. Uh, we're down in Covington, and he just said, we had clean my green in the house. And, and from that point, it just, it just sort of stuck. And I was like, fuck. I got a fucking name. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, he gets he gets 100% of the credit on that one. That's funny. He's almost about, almost shot time. A little shot right before we, uh, get going too crazy here. And these sweet, uh, you slut cups. I wonder where those came from. <laughs> Just a couple of sluts with some screwball. There we go. To your health. That shit's hilarious. Do you want to fucking talk about this? How this all came I, about? Okay, so, <laughs> um... <laughs> These these cups, there's um a company that sells them. Um, I won't go into too much. I don't know kind of trouble we get over that one. I mean, I don't yeah, they're not promotions. Sponsor. You don't so, sponsor me. You, right. If this is your cup and you want to uh, so play claim, you fucking email me. <laughs> these showed up at a place that I used to work. Like it's still the same company that I work for, but it's a different location. So these showed up there, um, which obviously I'm no longer at at this current point in time. So, the uh, ever proficient mailman delivers those to the the founder and CEO of the company that I work for. <laughs> My name is on the package. He opens it like he just kind of sees it, and there's some other stuff in there, like some um, gingerbread pot leaf and 
joint bags and some uh, eat ass, smoke grass, live fast stickers. Like, just <laughs> some random shit. He sees this stuff, wraps it back up, looks at the name and says, oh, this isn't mine. Brings it over to the location that I'm currently uh, working at. And he's like, hey, I've got, I've got this, this package in the car for you. He's like, oh, really? I um, didn't really order anything. He's like, well, I'd bring it in, but there's some cuss words on it. I'm like, well, that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> so he goes out and he gets it and he comes back in. And we're like, we're huddled up and we're looking at it. And there's these little white boxes inside the boxes. A little cup. It says, you slut on it. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. And then it really starts to piece together the fact that there's a eating ass and a drug-related paraphernalia package was delivered to my place of employment with two mugs <laughs> that say you slut that somebody ordered under my name and the owner, the founder, and the CEO of the fucking company that I work for <laughs> happens to be the guy who opens this. Like, who the fuck does this happen to besides me? That's so good. And I'm like, <laughs> this is not somebody that I have an interaction with on a daily basis. <laughs> I've worked for the company for six years, and I've, I've, I have maybe 15 interactions with him. Right. The most recently... You slut mugs and eating <laughs> ass stickers. At least the next time that he saw me, his question was, how's that coffee mug working out for you? So I was like, all right, cool. I uh, dodged the drug test on that one. <laughs> I don't know so, if, if it was like meant to be like, uh, you know, like, oh man, Mike, Mike's got a lot. But you would think someone would have owned up to it if it would be a card or, yeah. or something. I, or if it was just a good rib and someone was like, this is going to be fucking great. <laughs> I, think, I think the fact that the package fell into the hands of the person that it did. I don't really think about my package in my boss's hands. I mean, not since the other job that I had. But anyways. Oh. <laughs> Sounds all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think because of that scenario, somebody's been kind of scared to be like, oh, shit, that was me. True. If, uh, if whoever ordered that and sent it, you fucking won. <laughs> like, I don't... Like... Come get your medal. Like, I don't know what the fuck else to say. I doubt there's a rib that I can throw out that would top just the way this one fell into place. Yeah. Like, yeah, because that how it worked out, like, ain't, like, showing up and someone be like, what the fuck is that? And you open it, it that would have been, like, funny, sure. Right. But, like, the fucking CEO of the company, it, it getting to him, that makes it he just, so good. He happens to be heading out for lunch, and the postman's like, oh, cool, fucking here, bet. No wonder his shit's backed up. Thanks, Mr. Postman. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. But at least, you know, the, the, the cups are pretty cool. <laughs> what was even better is I'm with my daughter and my uh, my wife. We're out at Alta. And um, so that logo right there is like the Eve St. Lauren logo. I don't know what that is, but all right. It's, it's like a makeup brand or whatever. Yeah. So, but all I saw was the YSL, which is the same logo that's on these cups. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I look over and I'm like kind of snickering to myself, I guess. <laughs> Sluts. <laughs> sluts. You randomly think of sluts, you just start laughing. But like I'm I'm at Ulta, so my me and my son are the only two men inside of this entire location, and the first thing I start thinking is sluts, and I'm like, oh, this is how you catch a case. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say like your daughter was buying that brand and you were like, No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not even the plot She's, right there. Whoa, hold on. She starts grabbing some Eve St. Lauren. I'm like, nope. Like, I will I will pay the extra $40. <laughs> like, just get the next brand up. My kids are, like, you've met them. Right. Like, my kids are fucking amazing. Like, I don't know what I did in a past life <clears throat> to be, nice. I don't know what I did in a past life to uh, to be given the kids that I've I've been given now. But, like, I'm, I'm giving credit to my wife. We had this, we had a Cavalier, and we're cleaning it out. And my daughter found a quarter. And I, I love telling the story. So she finds a quarter. She's like, Dad, I found a quarter. I'm like, cool, it's yours. She's like, oh, I can buy some candy. Okay, well, it's your quarter. She's like, well, if I save this with three other quarters and I've got a dollar, I can buy, I can buy some better candy. I'm like, well, you can save it up. It's your quarter, like, and that becomes your dollar. She's like, well, what if I save $10? I'm like, well, then it's your $10. Like, that's yours. That's what you do with it. So I think at the time she was like, um, she's about uh, seven or eight. When this when this happened, we get some more change out of the car. She gets it counted up. She's like, "Dad, I got six bucks here." I'm like, "Cool, well, you found six bucks. What do you want to do with it?" She's like, "I, I think I want to donate it." I'm like, "You want to donate six bucks?" 
And she's like, yeah, but like, I don't want to like, not this six bucks yet. Like I want to, I want to make it 10 bucks and then I want to donate it. I'm like, okay, cool. So she did some stuff around the house and I gave her a couple more dollars and she looks at me and she goes, I think I want to save up a hundred dollars. Okay. What do you want to buy with it? I don't want to buy it. I want to donate it. Hmm. So you want to, you want to save a hundred dollars and then donate it? Yeah. Okay. To where? An orphanage. So you have $6 that you want to make $10 that you want to make $100 that you want to donate to an orphanage. Yeah. Why? Well, I've got you and mom, so they don't. So I can at least give them something that they can have. And I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking my fucking heart yeah, here. It's like you're a better fucking human than I am. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so let's. What do we do? Like, how do we? How do I make a hundred dollars? She's like, well, I'll just start saving my birthday money. So we we went on this path, and we you know, she wound up saving. Uh, it was 127 dollars and 14 cents, and I will never forget that number. Oh, yeah. So it took her a little under a year. Uh, 127 dollars and 14 cents went over to Redwood Orphanage, and it was, she's waiting in the car with her mom and her brother, and I walked in, and I was like, um, random question, do you take cash donations? And the lady at the counter is like, um, not typically, but we're, we're always happy to, to make something happen. And I'm right. like, okay, cool. So I go out, and I get my daughter, who comes in with this bag of change, literally a bag of change. And it's coins, and there's a couple dollar bills in there. So, what wound up happening with this is she told my mother-in-law about it. She told my brother-in-law about it. Um, I agreed to match whatever she donated. It turned into like 400 bucks Jeez. that everybody matched over. Hell yeah. So we went in and we had the, the checks and the coins and everything. And obviously I like, I put it in the bank and then just, right. but I wanted her to walk in with like this, this monument <laughs> that she could just sit on the fucking counter. <laughs> and she walked in and she went, I want to give this to you. And the woman that she handed it to was like, I don't know, 50-ish. And this grown woman just broke down and like she's just just starts tearing up and she goes, sweetie, where'd you get that? And she goes, I found it. <laughs> she, you found, I was like, modesty was, right. it's just, ah, these kids. That's fucking dope. like, And my son, I mean, we had small conversations. So my son is the size of, of me as a grown ass fucking man. And he's 14 years old. <laughs> And he makes sure to remind me that he's the size of a grown ass man <laughs> at 14 years old. But he uh, he got in trouble because there was a kid who, on the bus, you know, before COVID shut everything down, obviously, a couple of years ago, kid on the bus called another kid on the bus the uh, the hard R word. Oh, and yeah. he doesn't like that. The bus driver tried to split him up or whatever. So the one kid, uh, kid's name was Tyler. He. Uh, Stood up, got mouthy with my son. My son's twice the size of this micro human being. Um, they uh, they wound up scrapping. <laughs> it wasn't even so much of a scrap as it was my son just Lenny just bear hugging this kid like a Looney Tunes cartoon, and just holding him there. And the uh, the security footage off of the bus that we got to see, like I just I fucking lost it. because it's legit like my son just held on to him like it was the last time he was ever gonna see him and he just holds on to him and he's just he's holding he's just got him he's like we don't say things like that he's like you're gonna leave him alone he's just picking on the kid and i'm like i might need to get him tested <laughs> but no not not serious <laughs> <laughs> so we go and we meet with the uh, the principal at the school and she's like well for altercations like this it's a mandatory three day suspension I'm like well you've got one of two options you can suspend him or you can just let him be at school because I guarantee you I'm not punishing my kid for standing up for somebody else right yeah like, <laughs> if, that's, uh, if you're going to oh, send him home so for stupid. three days like it's good I'm taking three days off of work and it's ice cream the mall and video games <laughs> 72 straight fucking hours He's coming back to school just dehydrated and exhausted because he's not going to bed. Right. Like, we've got trophies to unlock. Like, <laughs> That's fucking great. <laughs> Whatever past life me did to get these kids, like, that dude's got to be the shit. Because these kids are better human beings than I am. Sounds, me too. Fuck. 
Um, I mean, I'm, I don't know if you ever paid attention to uh, wrestling shows, but like he's always with the younger kids. Yeah. And, like when they're running around or whatever, it's like he, sometimes you got to watch out because, again, he's the size of a grown ass man. Right. And if he's <laughs> running around with like six and seven year olds, <laughs> somewhere over the corner is going to be like, why is that? What's that man? Why is that big man? <laughs> he's, that big man's picking up that baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Karen. Karen. <laughs> And there's plenty of Karens at wrestling. Are you... <laughs> so that would probably happen. Who picked the name Karen? I don't know. Where fu- I have no fucking idea. Like, it just, I think it was just fucking like, like, popped up. Like, I think it was just like one of those memes, like, okay, Karen. Like, it was just like a thing, and then right. I could just kind of like, pick, it, it just caught fire. Well, it all started with like the, the, the haircut. Like, yeah. It's like, can I speak? Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> let me speak to your manager haircut. Yeah. Like, so, okay, so we noticed the haircut, but it's, who gave Karen Karen. The haircut. I think Karen like, is just probably universally just like the suburban white mom name. That's um, it's it probably is like a numbers thing. It's yeah, a, it's probably you're, statistically. You're gonna find like a bunch of. You're more likely to find a Karen driving an SUV in the middle of every fucking subdivision road, yelling at kids on their bikes. So I guess that makes more sense. It's Karen. It just I mean it make it fits. It just fits. Yeah. Karen just fits like. It just sounds like a shitty bitch name. <laughs> is there an acronym for Karen? Like, does is there something that like can somebody please? If there's an acronym that just explains Karen, please, I want to see it. Like, find any of my social media stuff and just fucking put it out there. You know, put on a fucking T-shirt if I need to. I can't even come up with one. I'm trying to think. Like, what the fuck is <laughs> like, it's not even like any good fucking. There's nothing in there. I don't fucking know. That's that's all I'm gonna do for the rest of the night now is just think about what like what Karen the Karen is. acronym and like fucking make it make it fucking sell well like I know uh, there was one Karen that I worked with and she was by no means like a, a stereotypical Karen she was like we made improper jokes to each other at work all the fucking time and and what made it even better is she was significantly older than I am so some Karens can be fun <laughs> Like, you gotta find that Karen that's married to a Chad. Like, that's a good Karen. <laughs> that's a good Karen. Oh, fuck. <laughs> a Karen married to a Chad is probably a slut. Let's probably. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I had a boss named Chad at one point in time. He was, uh, he'd been drafted in ma- into Major League Baseball. And he was, he played for a farm team for three years and he wound up as my general manager at a fucking Speedway. <laughs> so. Damn. I- Damn, Chad. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I got tired of fucking hearing him. That's for goddamn sure. Like, I get it. You went in the seventh round. I heard it. <laughs> I fucking heard it. But now you're at Speedway. <laughs> <laughs> the Gatorades need stocked, all right? Your friends were just here. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just a couple of sluts. A couple of sluts. Karen, you slut. Karen, Chad, fuck yeah. y'all. Sluts. We met, like most of the people I know, through wrestling. When did you start, like, deciding, like, I want to try, and I want to be a wrestler, I want to go for it? Um, so that's, a, that's kind of a sideways question. Um, I was one of those kids, like, I, I grew up fucking broke between, like, bumfuck Egypt, Northern Kentucky, like, back end of, like, Walton before it was developed, and... Covington, so like inner city, city heights, downtown Covington. So the only thing I had between my dad's house and my mom's house was the occasional professional wrestling show that I could catch on TV. So like that was that was my superheroes, right? That was that was my DC, that was my Marvel. Like I didn't have anything else except for <clears throat> like Mario Brothers and fucking pro wrestling. We held on to that. Um, my older brother and I we were always fucking wrestling out. Like if there was if there was a block of grass that was bigger than, like, 10 by 10, that was our ring. Like, we're fucking throwing each other around. So it kind of started there where it was, like, those kids, like, ah, I want to be the fucking ultimate warrior when I grow up. Like, I mean, wind up doing as many drugs, but still, it's the same thing. Trying. So, (laughs) like, make you proud, man, don't worry. Um, (laughs) So, right around middle school, we started meeting more people who were, like, who were kind of into it, so we started really building up, like, okay, so this, you guys are a tag team, you're a tag team, you're gonna go wrestle, and then you figure out, like, Okay, so you're you're a tag team, you're a tag team, and then you're gonna face these guys, and you start picking things up, and that was kind of like 
the the head the head of the monster where it was like fuck man like okay so we've got 15 kids here who want to be wrestlers so like this is this is an organization right we can <laughs> like we can do this so as we go through and like things start getting more intense we start weeding it down to where it's it's my older brother Danny um, my best friend Andy and myself and it's like it's just the three of us and like where the fuck do we go from here right so by this point it's sophomore year of high school uh, I'm starting to figure out what music is beyond like the country music that my mom listened to when I was a kid and I was like you mean Leonard Skinner is not the only band with a guitar in the world uh, my older brother introduced me to Pantera Pantera then led me to Rob Van Dam so <laughs> listening to listening to Walk um, somebody was like oh god dude, that's that's RVD's music I'm like fuck is RVD so we're like aluminum foil on the rabbit ear antennas trying to get fucking UPN channel 25 to come in properly catch a little bit of fucking ECW and we started no like on ECW there's a uh, broadcast notifications coming up for like wrestling schools so we start looking into like pro wrestling illustrated and um, some oh God, who was it there was a really short lived fucking knockoff magazine I cannot remember the name of it but it was kind of locally based, and it started showing up like there's wrestling schools. So this was, I graduated in O2. Plan was to go in the military after graduation, didn't pan out. So that lasted until O four. Internet starts blowing up and everything. Bone Crushers pops up. So I'm like, there's that or HWA. So like those are the two. Right. So um, there was a, a short like. Try out, and I, I don't want to say try out because it wasn't a tryout by any means, but like a see if you want this kind of weekend camp right. that popped over with HWA, and I was like, all right, cool. So I just wanted to feel it right. Like I just I I wanted to see what a wrestling ring felt like. Like I I've, I've seen them, I've been around them when they were being built, I've been around them when they were being torn down, and obviously watching all these, like I've seen so many fucking matches by this point because the only thing I ever watched was pro wrestling. Right. Like, I'm doing that fucking fantasy booking all the way. Like, I've got notebooks of, like, fake characters that don't exist that I'm... I've got pay-per-views. Like, I think our next show is, like, in three weeks. <laughs> if you go back and read the fucking books, we'll go through and do the... Uh, the see what it's like, Cam. Uh, we'll just call it that. And then it was... God, oh, eight? I think it was when we're kind of playing on MySpace or whatever. Where um, I'd already met you by this point because I was a fucking mark, and yeah, oh yeah, you, like, you guys come to shows and oh yeah, we were the protected one the of these, man. protected one of these, um, and that was that was the spawn creation of uh, the second fantasy camp that we went to. Yeah, I remember that fantasy camp pops up, and I, I told my wife, I was like, it's fifty bucks, I gotta know. Like, um, I don't give a shit else. She's like, okay, uh, do what you gotta do. Oh, so yeah. I think this was. I think this took place in 0, 07 or 08, uh, which is really weird to say in that direction because that was so fucking long ago at this point. So, right. uh, so we go over and cut this terrible ass po uh, promo. And you guys, you guys have to do a tag match, right? Well, the first one we didn't do the tag match. Okay. Uh, the first one I worked Boomer. Oh. A few. Um, I think Boomer Isles. Yeah. 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 He was a so, writer on the fucking movie. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So actually, he was he was the first guy that I worked a full match with in uh, an NWF ring. Um, we go over and we do you know we do that and we talk to Roger and um, you know, the, the promoter and everything. Uh, we have some conversations and it was kind of like I walked away from that weekend and went that was fucking cool, right? <laughs> like I was I sat in the parking lot. Um, this one Bone Crusher obviously was over in Camp Washington before the new location. So we sit over there for a little bit. And I'm sitting in the parking lot. And I'm like that just fucking happened. Like, that was, that was cool. Like, I, I got my, like, the shit kicked out of me. Um, I had a fucking match, and, like, people cheered. I'm like, that was, that was fucking dope. Like, guys, right. that was cool shit. The fucking VHS tape. <laughs> what I'm getting that little bitch. And it's still floating around my mom's house somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, so anyways, like, the next year, like, and this is how fast, like, technology kind of evolved was with VH test, uh, VHS tapes one year, and then the next year was DVDs. Like, it was legit, like, that, that, that fucking that, quick. You're in the middle of that transition. Yeah, like, so right there. Um, 
So when he mentioned the tag match, there was uh, my my best friend Andy and I who went back the next year for fantasy camp, and it was a big joke because it was like, oh, two time fantasy campers. So I'm like, yeah, put a fucking trophy up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we go and uh, we do the fantasy camp thing. Um, Roger, it was we kind of geeked on this a little bit. Um, it was pretty hard posky. When Andy and I like we're we're kind of talking or whatever, um, and Roger comes over and goes, "You guys make that a tag match," which was like we didn't we didn't expect that, right? Because like Andy's he's been my best friend for fucking ever. Like um, I don't talk to him as much these as these days, but like he's like he's still my dude. Like he's one of those right. dudes where if I didn't talk to him for three years and I just went down to his place, like we never missed a fucking day, right? Like he's he's my fucking dude. We're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck yeah, hard pop, right? Because we cut this uh, we cut this promo called the Protected Wannabes. At the point in time, there was there was a, a, a faction in the NWF called the Protected Ones. So we thought, what better way to stand out from everybody else? Like we'd seen the fantasy camp thing because we did it the year before. So we're fucking nerds. Um, <laughs> so the next year we roll over and we're like, okay. Um, Let's see if we can do this together, like side by side. So, uh, they let us cut this promo. Um, what was it Andy? <laughs> we're talking about what we're gonna say. Um, I called uh, Jesse Hyde the uh, Eddie Van Has Been of <laughs> the NWF. Um, Andy came up with the with the words Pompano and Joe. Um, so we came up Pomp and the Hippies because like they were feuding with with the Protector ones at the time. So the whole promo was just kissing Roger's ass, like. Just fuck everybody else in the protected ones. We're kissing Roger's ass. That's it. Like, that's all we gotta fucking worry about. So, like... <laughs> Which is, I mean, it's fucking... factual. It's, yeah. Like, fuck everybody else. Right. So, like, <laughs> we go through and we do this thing. And, like, we leave and we're like, that was fucking awesome. Um, so, from that point, it goes forward for, like, a year. <sighs> Bought a house in the suburbs. Wife, kids, two cars. Like, the whole white picket fence thing. Like, the whole fucking scenario... Uh, John Mueller, one of the ads, he was he came over and he's like, "Why don't you fucking wrestle?" I'm like, "It's not an easy answer, man." He's like, "It's an easy question. Like, why don't you fucking wrestle?" I'm like, God, I guess it is. <laughs> why not? But why the fuck not? So like, uh. I spent like two months just kind of fucking pining in my own goddamn head, which then turned into me having a conversation with my wife. I was like. The whole, like, just pouring my heart out thing where it's like, this is something that I've always wanted to do. Like, right. I just, I strayed so far from it. Like, I need to try this. And this woman, God fucking love her. She looks at me and she goes, okay, so go do it. <laughs> I was, I was waiting for a fight. <laughs> yeah. I had, like, I had my bullet points ready. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for her to pop out and be like, you start, just listen. I was going to break up my fucking legal pad. and would be like, ma'am, ma'am, <laughs> your honor. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just plead my whole fucking case to her. And she's like, okay. <laughs> okay. Just fucking okay. let it go. So uh, that's when I really got into the, uh, the training. Cause I'd, I'd already signed up um, at one point, but then I came back into it. And, like I was in better shape and I was kind of healed up. Had a few small fucking token injuries um, all the way through. Um, got into it, and this was fucking when I first fucking came back in like 2015. Yeah. I think right around that time frame. Um, kind of came back in, and somebody called me the greatest thing that never was. And that was uh, that was something that ate at me for a while. Right. Oh, I fucked with that. And it was just, it kind of hit me. Um, so I came back, started training, started fucking fucking building up and this is still in bone crusher this is camp washington so i came back in got a fucking into it and just fucking ramped it up and then fucking shattered my foot same fucking foot that about a year later i was working with uh the one individual who dropped town way too close and i popped out and rolled back over and just fucking rebroke that shit so it was uh two breaks same foot same spot right just pop that shit right out and it was at that point that my wife kind of went, you sure? Yeah. I was like, well, fucking, <laughs> as, as excited as everybody is to buy a fucking house, a mortgage will kill any aspect of hopes and dreams <laughs> that you fucking have. Once you start thinking about how you're going to fucking pay the bills, like, 
you're you're a drone at that point. Right. Like you're just you're a fucking ATM for everything else where yeah. all you do is you produce cash that goes to everybody else. And that's where that's kind of where the dream died. But I tried to keep around as much as I possibly could, like right. doing some work even with the shutdowns last year, uh, putting in some light fixtures and fixing some shit up over at Bone Crushers, uh, the new place for Roger and everything, because Roger fucking shoots me a message and he's like, hey, so I'm kind of looking for one of these or this is sort of broken or something like that. I'm I'm like fucking bet. Like, I got right. you. I, if I can't fix it, I'll find somebody who can, or I'll watch fucking YouTube videos. I'll make it <laughs> for, now they, now they, <laughs> I mean, and, and that's good because I mean, that's still there's there's still a need for that, and even if because of the fates, you know, you can't get in there every fucking week, you still have found a reason to stick around. You still have a reason to, and uh, obviously a reason to be wanted. I mean, fucking. Fucking somebody came for you and your fucking DMs on Snapchat and fucking you would have thought that you died. Was, you would have thought you died on holy Facebook. Holy shit, dude. You posted and that God. and like, I'm, there's like 90 people were fucking tagging you. Fuck, don't come for my green, my green. Like, I don't like, like, I still, obviously, obviously without even fucking making a mark in wrestling, you've made a mark in wrestling. And that was one of those things like that whole fucking scenario was like, Jesus Christ. So, obviously, I mean, nothing gets done without behind the scenes. Right. Like, whether it's one person, like, what you've got going on, like, you're you're doing fucking all of this. Like, right. the, the editing, the setup, everything's out of your fucking pocket. Like, this is you going hard. And even with that, like, you know damn good and well that if, if you're like, hey, so this doesn't work, or I need this, or I need this, like, can you help me out? Like, right. you know fucking damn good and well that you send me a message, I'm going to be like, I don't know how to fucking fix it, but give me a minute. Right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do sure. what I can. Like, and I think kind of that mentality was like, part of it is like, not to get too fucking deep, but like, part of it is like, I kind of fucking hate myself. Like, like I don't know, that's kind of a fucking drop off. <laughs> what? What? It's like, that's a hard fucking drop off. But, I mean, especially in this day and age, like, everybody has that, that situation where they're like, you know, whether it's they think they're not good enough, right, or they can't yeah, do this yeah, right, or they can't do this. But, like, with wrestling, like, I've never, the one thing that I've never done with professional wrestling, like, at least on a, a better scale, because uh, before I started at Bone Cross, was like, I had a couple matches. Right. And they were shit matches. And if nobody ever sees them ever again, I'm okay with that. Like, because I was a stupid kid who thought he knew things or he knew somebody or whatever. But, like, from that standpoint is you, you feel that need to produce. You feel that need to jump right. in. And you're like... I see, I see you in there busting your ass, and you're you're fucking killing yourself in that ring, and you've right. got, you know, the the blood and the marks to prove that like what you did in there for everybody watching was like, it was there, it was that right. impacted them. So, somebody in in the offset position is like, okay, so he's gonna go in there and he's gonna get the shit kicked out of him by somebody twice his fucking size for however many fucking minutes, like then I need to make sure that the fucking lighting's right. Like, I need to make sure that whatever he needs over in the... Like, if he needs a fucking towel because he's bleeding, like, I need to make sure the fucking towel's there. Right. Like, that's, like, the the minor contribution that I can put in that in regards to, like, that message that a lot of people see on a much grander scale. Like, I don't, I don't see it that way. Right. So, whether it's one of those things, like, you eat a hundred fucking cookies be- because you hate the way you look, or if it's one of those things where it's like you just you fucking murder yourself trying to make sure that if somebody's like, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Like, it'd be kind of cool if like we had some extra lights up here. You're like, you want you want lights? Yeah. Like, I, I fucking got you. It's like that scene from The Office where Michael's like, oh, I don't have my phone. And Dwight's like, will that make you happy? And like <laughs> runs into a fire. fucking building to get it. It's like, like, it's that standpoint. Like, I'm I feel like fucking Dwight at that point. Like. Right. I'm like, is that is that what you want? Like, I can I can fucking do that. Like, whether it's that like small release of fucking serotonin and dopamine that's gonna pop up and like make you feel useful, or was it like that you contributed something to the show, like whatever it was. But um, and that's I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook a hundred fucking times, like the whole compliment challenge thing that I did for a while. Um, where it's just it's randomly like I'm just legit just kind of sitting there and I'm like, fuck, I don't. I'm not fucking feeling this. So what do I do? It's like, if I'm not fucking feeling it, like maybe somebody else isn't fucking feeling it. So 
Okay. So I'm I'm gonna help. See if I can help them. Right. So um, you pop in, and the the random compliment challenge is just if you, if you're not feeling it, like fucking just just hit me your name, just and I will tell you something fucking amazing about you. Right. And that's just that's it. Like if. If I can't feel it, then I want somebody else to. Right, exactly. So, exactly. and that's yeah. just... Yeah, I get that. Um, and the big thing, like, if you jump over the social media aspects, is like, the big thing is, like, you have to be the change you want to see in the world. You have to be that aspect. Like, if you want the world to be a better place, you have to be the first step yeah. in that fucking mile-long journey to make it a better fucking place. You have to be the first one, because you can't look around like... Pfft, this place is fucking dirty. Like, somebody should fucking clean this and throw a fucking beer can down. Like, right. you, you can't fucking do that. You can't add to the fucking trash. Exactly. Like, you have to look at this and you're like, God damn, like, I just finished my beer, so instead of throwing it down there with the other fucking beers, I'm going to throw mine away and then I'll grab somebody else's too. I guess that pissed somebody off. <laughs> Where, it just, I got a fucking random message from this, <laughs> for lack of a better term, we're just going to call them a gentleman. Um, that I've known for a very long time. Uh, essentially, this message really just kind of told me to off myself. It's really what the takeaway of the message was, was to just stop being a fake fucking nice guy and just kill myself. Um, and the joke's on them, <laughs> because you're not the first one to have that thought, pal. So, fuck off. posted the message on, on this, uh, some social media with the, uh, the highlight of, don't be this dude. Right. Don't. Right. Like, it's very easy. If you don't like something you see, it's very easy to scroll. It's very easy to swipe. It's very easy to just put your fucking phone or your tablet down. It doesn't take a lot of effort just to be like... Yeah. And just walk the fuck away from it. So, post that message on there, and then my boys came riding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was, oh, yeah. It was... Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Some shit hits the fucking fan. Oh, man. <laughs> I, was, I felt like a fucking general. Just to see, like, just from anything of, like, yo, this is me, just a picture of me and, and somebody who's like, yo, this is me and my dude. Right. Or the ones who are like, pause. Like, if you've got something to say about Mike Green, right. I suggest you just skip talking to him and come talk to me because you've got to meet me beforehand. Mm -hmm. I'm like, goddamn. I didn't. I didn't think it was like it was that level, but like the the love that came out of that, I'm like motherfucker. This is like I'm I'm not above saying like I teared up a couple times. Oh, I'd fucking like kind of going over this. I'm like I just for what like for for what the situation went from to what it turned into it was like a dude in a in my fucking DMs telling me to fucking off myself to like the fucking. Legion of Good Brothers <laughs> just rolling up behind me going, I'm fucking think so, man. Yeah, fucking, I'm fucking yeah. think so. Any of any of our dudes, any of our good brothers who are who are checking this shit out right now, just know like I fucking love you. I fucking love you. And you know damn good and well that if that shit ever popped up for any of you guys, you damn like you fucking included like all of this shit. Like, I know how to hide a body. Ball and it's not a murder if there's no evidence. On behalf of all the good brothers, like, we fucking love you, brother. Oh, I fucking love you guys, man. And I'm fucking glad you're here. I'm fucking glad you shut that shit down and didn't fucking, like, stagger you. Some people, some people let that negative shit fucking eat you and well, I mean, you, you battle gotta, back and fucking, like, fuck that, dude. You, you know, you fucking kept shit. going, it, yeah. It took all of maybe fucking 15 minutes of, like, just social media and Facebook just... Without, without anybody knowing this guy's... Because I would not give this dude's fucking... Yeah, 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 yeah. None of it. Like, so many people... And it wasn't even just the good brothers. It's like people that I work with, right. like just people that I know randomly. I'm like, who the fuck was it? Like, fucking tell me. I'm like, I, I got this. Like, trust me. <laughs> like, I fucking got this. And it was fucking ten, maybe fifteen fucking minutes later. Like, I got another message. Like, I was, I was out of line. Like, shit was kind of crazy. And I'm like, fucking do you, boo boo. Like, I mean, and then and that's the thing is, you didn't fucking put the guy out there. All the the, the screenshots and all that shit. <laughs> You know, it was all anonymous. There was there was no information out there for anybody that we know right. or anybody that I know to to find them or I mean unless they're like super fucking hacker mode. Right. Like there's there wasn't a way to trace it back to anybody and for it to break down the way that it did, like it was fucking Right. Hmm. 
It was fucking great. It was great to fucking see the <laughs> troops fucking rally, man. Right. Like, I fucking love to see that shit. And that was, I think that was early in 2021. Like, that was early this year. That was post-fucking New Year's Day. So, yeah. like, shit rallied the fuck up in 2021. So, if anything else, like, let that be the way 21 runs. Yeah, all for where, sure. And we need a lot more of that shit. Like, it's just negativity shut fucking down. Shut it the fuck down. Fucking brothers just having fucking backs. Just, pe- just having fucking people's backs, you know? Like, there's so much negativity and shit. I get so fucking exhausted seeing that shit. Right? Like, man. So, and let that be, let that be a part of it. So if you're seeing this fucking shit right now, like, let that be a major part of it. That if, if that shit starts to run, like, it's, good brothers aren't, they're not isolated to one fucking scenario. Right. And by any means whatsoever, there's, the betterment of the world and being the change you want to see is definitely something that you want to fucking hold on to for anybody and everybody. So even if, if you have no idea who the fuck I am, if you have no idea who any of us are and something pops up, fucking, again, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Clean Mike Green. It's not fucking hard to remember. Yeah. Just fucking hit that shit. Send me a fucking DM. Like, I mean, I might not be able to do too much from where I'm sitting at, but fuck, man, there's fucking there's good, a way for everything. Fucking good vibes, good energy, and a fucking... Exactly. A cool fucking message back, a fucking... Send one, see one, like send shit like that, man. If nothing else, I'll tell you, you're pretty and stroke your hair. That's my number one fucking move. That's what I fucking say every week here. That's what I fucking I put on my shirts and my fucking mask, bro. Fucking Bill and Ted, be excellent, be to, excellent to, that's to each other. other. Man. Just that fucking wild stallion. It's, it's fucking. It starts with you. Just fucking be excellent to the fucking the next guy. You know how, what I mean? How fucking happy do you think Keanu Reeves would be? Just to be scrolling, like just scrolling through the fucking social media aspects and just sees, just. Just how everybody else is just, they're fucking taking that. Like, yeah. And not from, like, Face the Music, Bill and Ted, but, like, Bogus Journey and Excellent Adventure. Well, I mean, and not even just, like, just like Bill and Ted, just, like, just that general way. energy. It's like, I don't say it because, like, Bill and Ted is not my favorite movie. They're not my favorite character. Oh, by any means. Like, I enjoy the movies, but, like, I say it because it's, I feel like that's such a generalization of how we should all be. There is just so much that can be thing. broken down to just fucking just be the change you want to see in the world. Exactly. Be excellent to each other. The happiest person you know, one fucking shitty interaction could fucking ruin their fucking yep. day. A smile to a stranger will change the world. Yeah. And that's wholehearted. Like, I I made a joke about, uh, or made the comment about fucking hating myself. And being, <laughs> especially in this day and age, but like, being a middle-aged suburban dad who just goes to work to pay bills, like, that takes a fucking lot out of you. Like, oh, I it, it does. And I see on a fucking daily, like, being a, an essential worker through the aspects of 2020, the amount of, of regulations and changes that have to move on a fucking daily basis and the miserable motherfuckers that are just out there. Like, there are people who exist just to ruin your fucking day. They are real. Absolutely. <laughs> There's... Somebody walked across your place of business, they looked at the front door, and they saw you and your friend smiling at the counter, and they went, Fuck that. not on my fucking watch. <laughs> not fucking today. And they walked in and yelled, excuse me. Like, we've fucking seen it. You've seen it, I've seen it. I dated You've it. Seen for it. You, yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> That's the counterbalance. So, like, when you, when you see that, it's... It's kind of our civic duty as humans to one another to be like, <laughs> nice to do. like I'm. I see your negative, and I'm gonna double it with a positive. Yeah. Like I'm gonna balance you the fuck out, and I'm gonna make somebody else happier. Like that's just the way it's gonna fucking go. Oh yeah, and that's just that's how it's gotta be. Oh, unfortunately, yeah. I just, especially like man, like the, the shit that has become our normal is honestly it's it's one of the worst parts of it. Like social media and shit. Every, every, I follow so many, like, gaming shits. And, like, best example is, like, Cyberpunk. I have been excited for Cyberpunk for fucking, like, last eight fucking ten years, right? And it comes out, and it's a fucking shit fest of glitches and problems, and everybody's... And I I legit was on a mission for, like, the first week it was out, calling out IGN. Because <laughs> I was playing it, and everything was fine. It was crashing, there were some shitty glitches, but all I saw from IGN was just negative, 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 negative. And, like... 
it drove me fucking crazy because underneath the problems was this great game. Right. Like, yeah, I was having a blast playing it, and I'd get pissed, like, fuck, I gotta reset the game. Fuck, it crashed. Yeah, it was happening a lot more than it should have been happening. But I wasn't going, it didn't crash. Fuck it, I'm, fuck this game, it's trash. No, I was like, this game is fucking awesome. Unfortunately, some dumb shit happens. See, and, that's, and that drives me That's a magic crazy. fucking word that you use, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Unfortunately is an absolute fucking word that everybody could just, that's... It's easy to shit on... Anything. Anything. And my, Anything. I, it, probably because it's two of my things I'm most invested in, but the two biggest things I see it happen in are two of my favorite things is wrestling and video games. Mm-hmm. Wrestling and, like, wrestling, it just, I just, everything that happens in wrestling, if there's a post about it and you click on, like, the comments, the comments are just, it could be, like, the coolest fucking thing. You could be like, that, that was fucking dope. And then fucking you look at the comments and it's just, Shit on, and I'm like, well, okay, so you, God, to go with why? that, like, perfect example is you look at the comments from like the Brody Lee tri- uh, tribute episode from AEW. People find negative shit to say. It's like these oh, matches God. don't make sense. Well, they're not fucking for you. They're not for you. It's fucking so crazy. Get the fuck over it. Like <laughs> that shit wasn't put together. So you're like, well, this this story doesn't make sense. I have no idea where they're going with it. This cry out of people. Like, it wasn't for you. It was for the fucking kid. So, just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Fucking have a fucking drink, rub one out, and go to bed. (laughs) That's it. Just rub one out and go to bed. Like, whiskey and masturbation will settle so many of your fucking problems. Like, 99% of them. (laughs) 99%. I'm I'm murdering this quote, but generalized is like, (sighs) the idea of, if the way that I am affects one person in a positive way, I did my fucking job. Right. That's it. That's it. Because I don't I don't care if 15 people find a way to be negative about what I have done for the day. If one person walked away and went, that guy's pretty fucking cool. Right. Like, I'm, that's it. Like, that's a fucking win for me. It's just like with, um, with the disc golf thing that we're doing on YouTube. Like, Pizza Slinger's disc golf. Um, one of the guys that I'm working with, he's like, hey guys, we got we have an unlike. I'm like, fuck that unlike. I give a shit. Yeah. Like, we're three dudes of three different playable, like, play uh, playing levels, playing disc golf together. We're like, we're filming it and having fun. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm a middle-aged suburban dad, which I've said like a hundred times at this point, who's going out with a, a 22-year-old and 20-year-old to play fucking disc golf. Like, I'm not gonna fucking hang with these dudes. Right. I don't give a shit. Like, because I enjoy doing this and, like, having fun. And, like, both of these guys want to be turn, uh, tournament pro players. Like, they want to keep moving forward. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to play well enough to make you fucking work for it. Like, I'm not going to fucking win. Like, I'm going to be lucky to be decent about it. But whatever. Right. So we go and we fucking play. And we do the video. And then he goes home and he edits the video. And he's like, we have an unlike. Fuck that unlike. We have 17 likes. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, still a winning percentage yeah if you make a pizza with one fucking topping there's eight slices if seven of those people like that fucking pizza and one (laughs) doesn't okay well sorry that one person just happened to be in a situation where they got what they didn't fucking like right so again next time fucking scroll on (laughs) fuck them fuck them fuck (laughs) them fuck them well, it looks like we're down to our last beer here, so that yeah, uh, looks that like means it. that uh, somebody's behind the curtain telling us to take it home. So oh, you slut, <laughs> you <laughs> slut, just a couple of sluts, just a couple like, of sluts sitting here, just uh-huh. a couple of sluts hanging out. We'll do one more small. Do one, one more. Fuck it. Fuck, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Oh, I fucking slop that everywhere. Put a screwball in a slut. God damn it. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's 21 right there. Screwball and a slut. <laughs> you slut. You slut. How we do it. <laughs> so, brother, I appreciate you coming down and hanging out and fucking chilling in the Titan verse, cleaning it up a little bit, probably, you know, doing some maintenance, fixing everything. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> appreciate you having me out here. Um, I don't usually get to start a lot of stuff. Uh, like I said, usually behind the screen instead of in front of it. That's so. true. That's true. Well, you're fucking right here now. Fucking yeah. everybody that's fucking... 
Make sure you like it and share it and do all that bullshit. Share it if you see it and like and subscribe. And go follow uh, Clean Mike Green everywhere on the fucking internet. And Great Mike Green Titan all over the all place. Shit. Great King Titan. Like, share, subscribe. Do and this shit. Comment Bro, and all that the bullshit. Fucking work in. I'm trying. I'm trying fucking to fucking do it. Do doing butt stuff. <laughs> you think this shit's good now? Imagine when he's making money off of this yeah, shit. Yeah, imagine when I have a fucking budget. Right? Let's, let's fucking get a sponsor or some bullshit. Get him paid so you can pay me to build a whole bunch of shit for him. Build a whole fucking set. I'll get a whole fucking studio. You can build the whole fucking, fucking thing. I'll do it. Fuck. God damn it. Fuck him. Fuck him. But anyway, make sure you uh, go and like us both and do all the fun stuff. And uh, we'll probably keep hanging out. and uh, <laughs> All the butt stuff. All the butt stuff. Fuck it. I don't know. But most importantly, make sure you smack your local pedophile. And most importantly, like I always say, be yeah, excellent to each other. other. Air guitar. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. Let's fucking go. Ah. Butt stuff. Butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs>